I broke a thousand rounds and it seems to have broken the gun too. So stay tuned, check it out. All right, it's not a horrible issue. I think it's pretty common if you shoot enough. Um, what it was was the pick rail, it came loose. Not a big deal, ruins your range day. But you know, yeah, I could have fixed it out in the field. I didn't want to do all that. I want to bring it home and do it uh, right on my workbench and stuff with some of the stuff I don't have out there. I have tools, but not everything I wanted to do. Plus with the Loctite and everything setting for a day and all that. So shut me down for the day out at the range. I guess we do some other stuff, but got home, fixed it, took it back out, re-zeroed it, excuse me, repatterned it, and I uh, got some footage of that. And I also got some footage of the, uh, the disassembly and the reassembly. It's real quick. I'll put it at the end of the video if you want to check that out. I'll also link some other videos if you haven't seen them prior to this, my build up to the gun as it sits and some other comparing it to, or shooting it with, I don't want to say comparing, shooting it with some other guns too, other shotguns. So like I said, not a big deal. I think this is something that just happens. It's, I mean, it's a shotgun. So I think I did some things, took some measures, to prevent it from happening again. But, you know, having to redo a zero after a thousand rounds or so is, I don't think that's totally unacceptable. So as far as that goes, everything's running great, just the way it ought to be running. So let's check out the shooting. All right, so I just got uh, the uh, rail remounted um, and I've got the uh, red dot lined up with the front fiber optic. Uh, so all three, well, all two sites are kind of lined up. Um, I'm at just at 10 yards. I got some double op buck. Um, shouldn't open up too much at 10 yards. It'll probably knock the target over. The reason I'm doing it on steel though, is because I don't want to see the uh, impact of the wad. I just want to see the pellet and the shot and see how that looks. As soon as I get close at all um, to what I'm seeing to what the impact is, I'm going to move it right back to 25 yards. So. It's the uh, Rio Royal Buck, double lot buck, nine pellet. So it appears to me it's going to be a little bit to the right. Let's go up there and take a look. I'm sorry, a little bit to the left. I'm going to have to... Move it over. Um, this is what it looks like. You can see definitely where the impact of the pellets are versus just like a smoke plume. But I, I'll tell you right now that that is opened up quite far for being a uh, ten yard shot. That's from my experience. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, seven. It looks like seven of the nine pellets hit. So maybe a couple went over here. We're looking at a, a solid fist size group. Um, I'm gonna go ahead and say that's pretty pretty wide open for uh, some double op buck at 10 yards. I would like to see a tighter group than that. Okay, made a little adjustment on the optic. Um, hopefully it gets a little bit more to the center. Um, it's hard to actually tell with these uh, rounds. It's opening up so big, but if we can get the center on the, uh, more towards the center of the target, the center of the group, center of the target, that's gonna be good enough. I'll move back and I'll might, I might switch loadings and check out slug and see what that does. All right, here we go. I can tell that's already a lot better. Um, I'm gonna go just a touch more to the right. It seems like we got all pellets on there. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. See, that's already a lot better. Um, a lot more satisfied with that. I would say about an eight inch group. So with that uh, Rio, I didn't have any consistency, nothing, I'm zeroing. So I want a little something better. So I'm switching over to the herders, also inexpensive, but uh, it's their version of the same ammo. The uh, two and three quarters, nine pellet, double lot buck. See if this puts up a little bit better of a group. Um, we'll take it from there. All 
Okay, first shot with this one, it's a lot better. Uh, it's center mass, it is open. I don't know how it should open up at 25 yards. I'm not a shotgun expert, but you put a couple more on there, repaint it, and then probably move to a slug. So let's go up there and take a quick look. Um, I'm satisfied with that zero so far. We'll see what the, uh, the slugs produce for us, but um, that's good enough because it's, it's good in center mass, 25 yards. I don't know how much this round should, this particular round should open up, but that's good enough for me. That's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12. 12 out of, I think it was four shots. I think that's acceptable. So I'm gonna go ahead and paint this. And you know what, let's try a defensive loading and then we'll uh, move to the slug. Okay, I got it painted. Um, I don't have defensive loadings on me. I thought I did, but I did find some, what, what I believe to be a higher quality round. It's the uh, Remington nine pellet double op buck express. So as I understand, this is a pretty high energy um, round. So I got a couple of those in there. Let's see what it does. If it shifts a little bit on the zero, I'm okay with that. I'm, I'm actually a little more curious to see how it opens up, being that this is a slightly higher quality ammunition. Let's go take a quick peek. I think it's holding together quite well. Um, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. So you got 50% um, hitting the target, which, which I think is pretty decent at 25 yards. If somebody knows better, please let me know. Um, but what I, I'm satisfied with is it's, it's, it's covering what would be a, a vital area, right? right down the middle. Um, but this is why it pays to know what you're shooting. You gotta practice with what you're gonna load up, especially if you're doing something for home defense. You can't have 50% hits. Um, that's my opinion. Let's get this painted up and then uh, we'll try some slugs. Okay, so um, what I believe to be a higher quality ammunition, Winchester Super X, at least it's uh, pretty popular. I don't know if it's the highest quality out there. Obviously not the highest, but it's prominent, so it's easy to find. It is the three or two and three quarter inch one ounce slug. Um, we're gonna see where that goes. And if we get a good shot, we'll take it back further and see what we can do. 25 yards. A little high into the right. Here it is, the problematic rail that comes from the factory. You know, I don't know if this is one of those deals where you just gotta get back in there and redo it after a certain amount of rounds or what happened. Once I pulled this pick rail off, you can tell that it had actually been doing it for a while because it had been shaking around long enough to where it knocked some of the finish off the receiver, the top of the receiver, and you'll see that. So it makes me wonder how long this has been going on. And I, I think, you know, being that it's a shotgun, you might not necessarily see it right away. You, you might just assume that you're not shooting as good as you probably ought to be. You see those marks right there? Yeah, so makes me wonder. So if anybody knows anything about a Mossberg here, the 930, um, with the four screws, the front and back sets there, the, you know, the front two and the back two are different size screws. So it was the shorter ones that had came loose. I don't think that has anything to do with it, but uh, just 
just a little note there. Those are the ones that work themselves loose. The back ones were loose as well, but not nearly as loose as the front. So if it had not been for the red dot on there, it probably would have for sure came out and fallen on the ground in the range while I was shooting. So what I want to make sure is that I got a nice clean surface to reassemble, degrease it, you know, the, the whole deal with all that. So you just want your Loctite to work as it should. And if grease is there, it's not going to do that. And you'll see on the screws and everything, there's still some packing grease. So this is, I have to assume this is the first time this has been off since it's been assembled at the factory. Uh, either way, it's, uh, it's just due maintenance in my opinion at this point. So getting all that cleaned up. What I'm going to do, you're, you're going to see it here, is a little bit of a trick. I don't want to, I don't know if it's a trick or what, but it's a little technique right here about putting the Loctite on the base. And I started doing this on my bolt guns as well because I was told from some old timers or some, some older shooters that this creates, it's, it's like bedding for your base. And all it does is, uh, it, it's not to hold it in place. It's not like a glue, although it, it will work slightly as a glue, but it is to fill that void, the imperfections between the receiver face and the underside of that pick rail. So you're going to get more contact there, you know, obviously when it dries and hopefully that's going to make this last quite a bit longer um, you know, and that's why I did that. And it, to be honest, it's not going to hurt anything if it's there. Right. So typically I'm not one of those people that just goop on the, uh, Loctite everywhere. Um, I try to just put it where it needs it, but this is something I started doing a couple years back with any type of optic that I'd mounted, um, that goes on with this type of pick rail onto a receiver you know, like the Savage 110 I've got, um, anything like that. So either way, thanks for watching, guys. I hope this helps somebody. Um, that's why I'm doing this. Um, I'm going to go ahead and link those other shotgun videos. Got the Benelli, the Maverick, um, a couple others. I think we got the video on here before I dress this one up here, the 930 before it got dressed up. So please go ahead and check those out. And thank you for watching and stay tuned for some more cool videos.